Hi, I'm Tricia Gibson, um, licensed professional counselor, licensed independent chemical dependency counselor. Welcome to Choosing Recovery. Um, this month we have Honorable Judge Music from Jackson County Municipal Court, and I want to thank you and tell you how I appreciate you taking the time out to, to be with us today. We're glad to come. Um, I thought we would have just a conversation about drug trends that you're seeing in Jackson County. Um, what's the substance use issue like for you guys? Uh, prolific, heavy, mm -hmm. um, in all honesty, um, things just move very fast there, uh, a lot of activity. Okay. Is there any certain drugs that you're seeing more of? Uh, heroin and definitely methamphetamine, the ice, the mm -hmm. manufactured crystal ice uh, brought in, not the stuff, uh, shake and bake, homemade mm -hmm. stuff out in the uh, townships. Okay. It's all uh, brought in from other cities. All right, so kind of transferred in. How are you seeing, being a, a judge in a court, how are you seeing how substance use is impacting criminal behavior? Well, it's, it's the gasoline that dr drives the engine. It's uh, behind nine out of every eight cases is what I say sometimes when I give some talks. Mm -hmm. and people even correct me and say, that, no, Judge, you mean eight out of nine. No, I mean nine out of eight. It's there. It's behind the scenes and everything. So it's pretty much impacting the majority of the cases you see? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Other than our run-of-the-mill minor misdemeanor traffic tickets, um, it's into everything. It's mm -hmm. part of the OVI, more OVI, drug-related OVIs now than uh, alcohol, OVI is okay. much more, uh, even sometimes when you have alcohol, it's dual. Mm -hmm. um, and all the criminal cases have a, a drug role somewhere, uh, whether it's domestic violence and too much alcohol, I still call that a drug, mm -hmm. uh, or combined with somebody's pain pills and things get really out of control. All the theft, all the theft, practically all the theft is uh, drug based. Mm -hmm. The um, the old days of seeing the theft, somebody coming in and stealing for actual food, uh, very, very limited cases. Okay. Very limited kleptomania type mm -hmm. uh, theft. Uh, it's all changed. Uh, the one I'm seeing the big burst in lately is uh, we used to have maybe four actual domestic violence cases or charges a month. Now uh, I had four this morning. Wow. And uh, it's any Somehow given day. substance related in the mix. Yeah, it went to four, four to four a week there for a while, and now we're getting multiple filings a day. Several a day. Mm hmm. Wow. Those are, you know, depending on people's injuries, some of them are serious, mm -hmm. very serious. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about specialized dockets. Mm -hmm. um, now, <coughs> perhaps not everyone knows what specialized dockets are. Could you give us like a rundown sure, of that? Sure, we've been a specialized docket court since the creation of specialized dockets, I believe in 2013, the Supreme Court of Ohio, or in 2012, preparing for 13, actually put it into law. Mm -hmm. We became a drug court in 2009 due to uh, sheer need and operated just on regular rules, but the Ohio Supreme Court saw a need to create a section um, of the court or a division, just like we have a traffic division mm -hmm. or a criminal division. They created a, a docket just for uh, specialized needs. For example, uh, I believe in Gallia County, Judge Margaret Evans started and Judge Mulford would have inherited a mental health court mm -hmm. and a drug court. Mm -hmm but you can do mental health. You can have a veterans specialized docket, a veterans court for veterans special needs. Mm -hmm. uh, the specialized docket dispenses with a lot of mumbo jumbo in law and red tape and it gets people in need right to the services uh, that are necessary to, to have the thing not recur. So it's linked with what kind of services? mental health and AOD or alcohol and drug services. Okay. I guess AOD first and then mental health. So counseling services. Counseling services, sure. Okay. Okay. Counseling, sometimes residential treatment, sometimes uh, no group meetings. Okay. Uh, we've got, we bring everything we can 
think of in the arsenal to the table. So you can do veterans, you could do, I think there, is there domestic violence ones? You can have a domestic violence uh, court. I'm trying to think if there are any. Uh, these things really kind of started with what they call DUI courts mm -hmm. or OBI courts. Uh, I think Judge Shriver, who's the president of our judicial association currently uh, over in uh, Batavia, uh, was an early starter with one of those. Okay. Um, drug courts probably preceded that with out of state uh, and then they slowly crept across the river into the Cincinnati area and University of Cincinnati has done a great deal of uh, research on yes. the effectiveness of mm -hmm. all that. Yeah, great research coming out of there. There's also substance abuse mental illness courts or SAMI courts. Mm -hmm. um, there's medication assisted treatment mm -hmm. type of specialized dockets. Are you involved in any of that? We use it all. Okay. <laughs> we, well, as, you, as you know, we've, uh, you, you've participated uh, around our specialized docket mm -hmm. court in, in uh, your other work, uh, mm -hmm. not on the drug court team itself, but, but yet you are. Uh, yes. You are treating some of those people. Uh, the MAT uh, stuff we, we incorporated into our existing drug court because medicated assisted treatment uh, is a big part of it to us with uh, whether it be uh, uh, a medication or the, the shot, we call it, just call it the shot now, the Vivitrol, Vivitrol shot, shot mm -hmm. which is a non-narcotic solution that is uh, injected once a month. Mm -hmm. I understand they're coming out with Vivitrol pills right now, but yes. I like that monthly shot. It's out of the way for the month and right. uh, the person can uh, go about their business and mm -hmm. go to recovery. Okay. That The only thing that bothers me about it is people who are doing well in recovery, they want to slip up and they'll reach for meth. Yeah, amphetamines. because Vivitrol doesn't treat that. Doesn't treat methamphetamines and we don't have a effective MA treat key treatment that I know of Not for yet. meth, and we hope, someday, yeah. but uh, there's no shot that gets it all, Right. no universal shot. And when the uh, subject turns to the methamphetamine, uh, they bear even closer watching and, and testing and monitoring. Mm -hmm. We test frequently in drug court, sure. which is my specialized doc docket court, mm -hmm. and uh, repeatedly <laughs> test. Sure. You might test someone in the afternoon at one o'clock and send the team by the house that night to test them again because uh, they have to be aware that the, the risks of use are getting caught, mm -hmm. not only death and all that stuff. It sounds like you have a really high volume of, of offenders you work with in courts. Do you have a team of people behind you that Absolutely. help you monitor this? Well, I have a number of teams, actually. Okay. I have a wonderful uh, Citizens uh, Guidance Committee uh, that comes and is supportive and spreads the news out into the community about what we are doing in specialized docket drug court. <coughs> I have a team uh, on stat court staff that is absolutely top notch. They've been all there for years and they've been doing this for years and they know how to work with the other teams like the treatment team that supports the drug court. We have representatives from all the area agencies meet every Thursday at 1.30 and they critique uh, everyone's progress or regression or just how the life's going, I guess, uh, that for that week uh, before we do the drug court and I meet with each one of the participants. Okay. Well, um, there's quite a number of people. That table's gotten pretty crowded mm -hmm. uh, from all the agencies uh, like uh, Woodland Centers and or now Hopewell. Uh, I still hyphenate it and right. use them both. So hope well. yeah. every, everyone's clear about what I mean. <laughs> but uh, Health Recovery Services, HRS, mm -hmm. comes in, does a great job too, and Spectrum Services uh, out of uh, Lawrence County primarily, but they're all I over. I think TASK is a part task of TASK is a big part. I don't want to leave anybody out now that uh, I've started yeah. to mention them. Right. But then we have uh, Amy and Justin Oyer and their Hope Center organization. Mm -hmm and uh, Nancy McGee and the folks at Elevate okay. have uh, some of our faith-based faith -based partners and also Colleen Moore and her associates up at the Lighthouse Church have two sessions a week. Wow. And Nan Nancy has two sessions a week and I think the Oyers do now too. Okay, wonderful. But uh, a lot of people are reaching out for the faith-based It sounds assistance. like there's a lot of people in the community coming together to help the court with there this are, problem. There are, and there's people that just uh, stop me on the street sometimes and tell me they're aware of the need and, 
anything they personally can do to help, mm -hmm. and they mean it. Uh, sometimes there is. Sometimes there is. Sometimes uh, I know we had one fellow. He was retired, uh, uh, specialized in uh, heating and cooling and so on, and he came up and has mentored uh, some of the, the young men and women that mm -hmm. want to get into the building trades. And um, the gentleman passed away. His name was Bill Vickers. So mm -hmm. I want to mention him. He's a big help to us. Wonderful. But th there are others like that, and they can help. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have the specialized training that you, like you yourself, have, but mm -hmm. mainly the team is consisting of mental health or AOD professionals. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I really feel like maybe you will agree. I feel like it's going to take a whole community to come together on this. Absolutely. And there's no one good solution. And, and we require outside support to the, mm -hmm. the funding to do this kind of work is exhausting. Yeah. Um, it's uh, an ever-present need. It seems like it, ever, it grows it more grows. and more. Yeah. So it sounds like you've been doing the specialized drug court docket for a while now. Is it successful? We believe it is. We can point to many individual recoveries. Uh, numerically, we feel like we're very successful. It varies from year to year. We have partners in other states that we sometimes send people to just to get away from their particular local toxicity. Their environment. Uh, the environment mm -hmm. is uh, poisonous, I think, because they are just up till now not able to make a break. Uh, with uh, people, places, and things, yes. they call it, mm -hmm. or the old associates where they uh, transact and deal, uh, buy the drugs, mm -hmm. uh, or get them given to you free if you don't have money so that you don't quit coming. Yeah. Or if you've been enrolled in drug court for a few weeks and are doing well, they see you at the gas station, they're going to reach right in their pocket and give you what opana they have uh, just to make sure you'll come back. I think we hear so much about the problem. We don't hear enough about the success stories and the, you know, people That's actually true. making it. That's true. We have uh, a lot of successes. We have a number of people that actually, uh, one young man teaches uh, at what we call senior drug court, which is a group of graduate mm -hmm. uh, drug court participants that meets every Monday night at uh, Spectrum, hosts that mm -hmm. group at 515 for about an hour. And the one young man created a notebook of things he did and learned and mm -hmm. things that helped him through his journey uh, from away from narcotics and uh, he shares that every week as part mm -hmm. of that program with those folks and Good. then they have uh, some stimulating discussions and that uh, we also have educational people that help us with uh, GED guidance and uh, other vocational uh, training guidance uh, like Ms. Lucinda Eubanks advises that group mm -hmm. and um, uh, so on, and uh, they have some uh, stimulating discussions and uh, do some exercises. And okay. They'll do that for about six months, then they can choose if they want to remain or go on to something else, another program. Okay, wonderful. Um, we talked a little bit before we started the show about the criminality of substance use and addiction. Is throwing people in jail that have addiction, is that the answer? <coughs> Well, what are some solutions that we could have? You know, I, I don't think that uh, there's a single solution. I think the solution has to be a mixed bag of the best ideas. Jail is not a horrible idea. Okay. Jail is not a bad thing. Or it doesn't have to be a bad thing um, for some folks. I mean, just like if you look back at Andy and Mayberry, yes. what did Otis do when he had too much to drink? He went down to the jailhouse, got the key, put himself in the jail, went to his cell, hung it back up on the hook, and went to bed. But uh, not to make light of anything. But if you, you read uh, a book uh, that's pretty popular right now by Sam Quinones called Dreamland, mm -hmm. for short, uh, Quinones advocates jails as treatment centers. He goes that far. But the, the volume is so high it has uh, pounded the uh, almost exhausted the treatment center residential facility or it's really not almost exhausted it has by far exhausted yeah. the capacity that social services can take people in mm -hmm. and uh, jails are, are exhausted also the jail bed space but jail is the only quick answer to someone who's uh, using out of control 
it saves the life immediately, it saves property, it gets everything under control. I'm sorry that maybe it's not the nicest place to go, but it preserves the status quo of life, property, and safety. Because there's a duty in, I'm sure, the court, the legal system, with police, there's a duty to protect. Absolutely. But at the same time, I think that there's a shift in mindset among the criminal justice community as a whole. They're more treatment oriented and they see the benefits of it. Well, yeah. But I, it's not always the answer. Some of, I mean, I should say in my generation, like I'm still young, a young guy, but my generation of judges, I think, came, we've all come to the bench with this mixed bag thinking, mm -hmm. well, we certainly still need jails, uh, but jails should be something other than what they are. Mm -hmm. And we need treatment centers. Now, if you could marry the two, see, the problem with America is if you look around the country, you really have a hard time pointing to misdemeanor treatment facilities that are fenced in. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as uh, in the early stages of recovery, you know mm -hmm. in your work that if you give unfettered freedom to an individual, uh, they're going to be able to acquire their substance of choice. Mm -hmm. It's happened in drug court where you have parents coming to drug court, one parent or adult family member going everywhere with the drug dependent participant and still coming in and testing high. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because the, the drugs were ordered to be placed on the windowsill of the bedroom or in the family home mm -hmm. uh, after dark, I guess, or something like that or akin to that. But you know, if you could marry the jail and the treatment center together, you have the security mm -hmm of a jail-like security and uh, you have the treatment that's needed to get the person moving along over the hump. Mm -hmm. And at Jackson County, uh, several of us elected officials are uh, planning something like that. I, I don't know what stage we're going to be at uh, tomorrow when we meet, meet again, mm -hmm. but uh, we hope to get some good reports from some of the, uh, one of the agencies that uh, is looking at the factors to set that up with us. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, slowly but surely we keep adding one or two elected officials all the time in favor of this uh, alternative sentencing centers, okay. what it's, they're called. They are statutorily permitted in Ohio. There's only two right now mm. and they're run completely different from one another, but they're run uh, according to the dictates of the community itself mm -hmm. because the community knows its own needs best. Sure. It's, it just sure. sounds like something that's statutorily ideal for us at this time. And it sounds like you're seeing that, you know, the jail structure or how we have it currently is meeting the need, but we could do better. We're, and so well, we're, we're coming up with plans. We're to meeting the need, but at a great, great cost. It's exhausting mm -hmm. the city, village, and county treasuries, all of them, to maintain the, the, tr the meeting of the need. Mm -hmm. And as we meet the need, I don't know I do know that we could make uh, so much better showing in, in, in meeting those needs. We could, uh, you got to realize there's certain levels of priority we can go to, mm -hmm. but we could possibly with more uh, space, we could reach deeper or earlier into the uh, drug dependence uh, becoming more addicted and do intervention, prevention, education mm -hmm. early, early, early. Uh, all the school kids uh, should get some type of educational prevention because if that would be the cheapest and best right there, right. prevention. And I know Health Recovery Services has been really great in the area of, of they providing are, prevention in the schools. They are, yeah, they're just one group really known for that. Yeah. And uh, that's awesome stuff. That's mm -hmm. the cheapest and best and most uh, marvelous right. answer. Right, most effective. Yeah. Right, most effective. Everybody yeah. can agree if they think about it. but. You know, I, I think we're meeting a need. I think there are more needs that can be met with going earlier yeah. and uh, cutting some of this off. But um, I guess to deal with the, the vast batch of uh, problems and folks we have right now, there has to be some type of invention of alternative sentencing. Mm. Uh, because the pers a lot of pre people won't treat until they're compelled to do so. This mm -hmm. is America. You've got the Bill of Rights. You've got all those freedom amendments, yeah. you know? In the First Amendment alone, I don't, I should stop and count them, how many freedoms you have in the First Amendment by itself. Yeah. And uh, my goodness, uh, w they have such freedom of movement, freedom of association, freedom of access. 
that a drug dependent person can make the most of those freedoms mm -hmm. to freedom their self right to death. Yeah. I know that treatment providers were kind of, you know, mental health, we have the option if you're a licensed counselor or have the ability to hospitalize someone involuntarily. But when it comes to addiction, if we feel as though someone's putting their life in danger, we're very restricted on that. You and I have probably had many discussions about we that have. in the past. Yes, we have. But, uh, and I know that uh, sometimes uh, I've probably taken some heat in some circles for, for overtaxing the resources of the mental health beds, but that's just it. <laughs> I don't look at what the resources are when I have a homicidal su or suicidal or combination mm -hmm. person that's going to hurt themselves or some possibly someone in the community. Right. I don't have the luxury to go over here and say, well, let's see, we're going to count the beds now. Yeah. But, and uh, substance use does very much play a role in suicidal thoughts, homicidal thoughts. Well, substance of, uh, abuse is, uh, again, the gasoline mm -hmm. uh, that it doesn't make anything about mental health issues better. Right. It seems to, to compound them exponentially. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, uh, the substance abuse uh, thing has gotten probably mental health off track in planning and budgeting for the next several decades. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see how it would. Well, it used to be, we had our own old school of thought, you know, when when I first started in addiction counseling, and I don't want to make myself sound too old either, um, it was mainly alcohol and marijuana, and now we're into heroin and methamphetamines and all kinds of things. So it has changed quite a bit. And so the old school of thought was mental health and addiction are treated separately, and now we're learning that we need to treat them simultaneously. I don't think they can be treated separately effectively. They can't. I mean, it's a whole person and they have that issue. I usually have whole people before me in, yes. the, in the courtroom and uh, or in the... And you uh, can't really tease out, okay, that's mental health happening and or that's the addiction happening. It's Well, you know, the person's putting all those components together. They've, you know, already got some mental health issues when they, they fuel up. Mm -hmm. And I think, of course, they're looking to escape escape their herd of any particular type. And I remember I, when I was really starting to learn a lot about this stuff, I don't know if I know a lot yet, but I know more all the time. I asked Dr. Gay with HRS, I said, why this uh, narcotic stuff, it's a, all a downer, right? They, they get in this euphoric state mm -hmm. on the use of oxycotton, oxycodone. And he said, yes, that's an escape. And I said, well, now this meth stuff, it was new then. Mm -hmm. I must have been talking with him about 2010. Yeah. And, um, he said, it doesn't matter what direction they go, it's about the escape. Mm -hmm. It goes up. Yeah. So just a different direction. Every, like, clients I've talked to and research I've personally done, they, people use substances to escape psychological or physical pain. That's the main reason why I think people start. And I think you may be right. I think the initial starting, some of them do it at parties and so on. Mm -hmm. and some of this stuff's so addictive now that, uh, of course, you know, we heard that about other drugs in the past, and I think it was probably some true then, but uh, this is no exaggeration. This uh, substances now, uh, the use of them, produce that euphoric, addictive uh, yeah. feeling from what's described to me by the users, uh, and I talk with them right across the podium every day. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you have a really great community backing in Jackson. We do. They are so awesome. I know uh, sometimes we try to get a building big enough to have an event for drug court. Um, we'll call this or that church or so on. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember one time where I thought, well, I'm going to go for the big one, you know, and because we needed it. And uh, I had some money set aside to cover the, the fee for that. And they called back. They were so nice uh, and said, oh, no, for drug court, we're going to let you do it for free. Wow. And a lot of places give us those kind of discounts or mm -hmm. uh, because it's all for the public good. Yeah. Everything we do is for the public good, education or result. Because you have such a good community backing, you know, what can you say to other communities? How can they be part of this effort to help with this problem? Well, I think Wh you, what do you think is needed? I think you have to look really, really deeply into uh, what's going on in your community. You look at your local statistics and then you try to see if there's a common core or thread uh, behind those goings on. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, when uh, 
you know, what's the, the main thing on the front page of the paper is uh, criminal activity, theft, and destruction, and vandalism, and crazy stuff like that. It's not real hard to figure out. And, uh, mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I can remember in my career as a lawyer years ago, uh, these, these, these folks kind of run in, in packs who you went to school with and mm -hmm. stuff. And um, I kind of watch these five or six fellows grow in their addiction mm -hmm. uh, and their criminal career, doing defense work and so on. <coughs> and I noted that it went on about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I noted also, uh, finally one year, uh, picked up the paper and I read where this one of the, of the five or so died. Mm -hmm. And the week later I picked up the paper and saw where a second one died. All five of those guys that I had represented variously that were associates of one another uh, over 20 years before were just dying off. They all died off in the same year mm -hmm. as uh, young, young adults or young men mm -hmm. approaching middle age I guess. But I thought well that's that's truly been a cycle mm -hmm. for them. I just wondered if, you know, you could ferret out other cycles. Uh, yeah. other and groups. I think regardless of where your stance is, like should it, should they go to jail or is substance use wrong or it's not a disease or whatever people might think about the stigma associated, that's still someone's son or, sure. or uncle or father. Sure. You know, everybody's child is their beautiful child mm -hmm. and I hate to see all these beautiful children uh, become uh, sick, addicted, uh, dead, mm -hmm. um, maimed, yeah. and so on. But uh, no, hopefully uh, the, the, the price of the crime, if the person's their own victim, let's not concentrate too much on punishment let's get right to treatment mm -hmm. uh, I think when you have other victims of theft and so on uh, people are going to have to be part of the solution even the victim mm -hmm. which is probably catching a heck right now for saying that but the victim has the, his or her rights to be satisfied mm -hmm. according to statute now to constitutional amendment mm -hmm. but the defendant the smartest idea is to have it not recur. Special docket courts are, were invented to save money mm -hmm. by lowering recidivism mm -hmm. or the reoccurrence of crime. So you know if you've gotten stolen from once or if the windshield wipers got jerked off your car once and you still live in the same apartment complex you want to try and not have it have it done again. Right. You know so uh, being pro-treatment is being pro-smart Mm -hmm. and uh, going f for the uh, savings yeah. of future incidents. Because it is reducing recidivism or it is. Re we, re rates. We it know is that. We know that. And uh, it will continue to make progress as long as uh, the programs are in place and yeah. improved. We are out of time. Okay. Um, I want to thank Judge Music for coming in and sharing what he's doing in Jackson County through Municipal Court and discussing all of his community support that he has behind him. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. And it's not just judge music, it's the